Hello everyone. This is Naini Thakur and welcome to Mind Matters. Welcome to Mind Matters. This is an Instagram live series where every Tuesday we discuss various aspects of mental health and how it affects people uh, across different walks of life. Um, coming to what we're going to be discussing today, uh, when the pandemic hit, you know, it, 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 it was a blessing for a lot of sectors, but it affected some sectors like FNB and travel very, very badly. Um, businesses, especially small and medium businesses, um, had to, close to no revenue coming in and they had to constantly keep paying overheads. In such situations, you know, some survived and others unfortunately had to shut down completely. Um, our guest for today is one such resilient entrepreneur, Pooja Dingra. She is the founder of Le 15 uh, Patisserie and Cafes um, that she founded in 2020. An alumni of Forbes India 30 under 30, she had to unfortunately shut down Le 15 Cafe, which was one of my personal favorites uh, during the pandemic. But she's made a very interesting pivot in her business model due to the pandemic um, and post that. So we're going to be talking to her about just that and how she dealt with the uncertainty and stress of running a business and continues to do so even now. So without waiting any further, I'm just going to add her to the conversation. All right. Hello, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, okay, just a moment, I'm going to turn off comments. <laughs> Too distracting. All right. Yeah. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm very well. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us. Um, no, of course, I, thank you for having me. This is my first Instagram live after a yes. whole year. <laughs> I feel like it's an honor for me, so <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I think it's this, this is a very important conversation and I know of a lot of entrepreneurs um, who have suffered a lot. Um, so I think that this is something that we need to discuss. Um, so great. Without waiting any further, I'm just going to dive right into the questions. Um, so tell me, Pooja, I mean, the F&B industry was one which was hit very, very hard. Um, and you were, I think, one of the few entrepreneurs to make that tough call, uh, you know, very, I mean, at the very beginning, I think it was, it was in the first wave itself. So tell me, when did you know that, you know, it was time to shut down uh, the cafe? Um, you know, so I, I mean, to your point, for sure, you know, the F&B industry has been hit uh, extremely hard and I don't think you know it, it is a long road to recovery and looking back at the last 18 months it just feels like um, I didn't know that this is what was going to happen or this is what I should expect but I just knew very early on that um, for my business to survive I knew that with COVID restrictions and the way things were happening something needed to change and um, we're not a tech company right we're not like I would talk to all my friends in the tech world and they would say we have 18 months runway and one year of runway and I was like mm, we're an F&B business we are you know like uh, we, we rely on uh, walk-ins for our cash flow so we I can barely go two months so I knew I could go two months and I knew that if I continued that way I, had, I would have to at some point reach we don't have deep pockets you know we survive with customers walking in so it was very clear very early on that um, there had to be some sort of shift so this shift had to be in the form of our model or in the terms of, you know, so it was, it, I mean, I, I, when I say it now, it sounds very oh, matter of fact, but um, those two months last year were the hardest for me in my life. You know, I was so isolated. I was alone in my room with Excel sheets, like just crying a lot, like trying to understand how can I save this thing that I've built for 10 years um, with no answers. And then the only answer was, you know, do what you can in this moment and then just take it as it comes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what kind of a toll did it take on you mentally and how did you kind of come out of it? Um, so I think the first three months was extremely difficult um, just because, you know, we had to take hard decisions of shutting down two of our cafes. A lot of the team had to be let go and it was 
um, something that was, you know, when you build something from scratch, it's uh, really hard to do those things. But, uh, you know, the love and support that we got from people was just incredible when we decided to shut the camera. And a lot of people were like, oh, this is just, you know, this is just sort of like a marketing thing. And I was like, why would I shut half my day <laughs> A marketing thing but it was um two months uh was tough like i told you it felt really isolating because you didn't have anyone um to talk to or who would understand what you were going through um i think that it just after the initial two months i kind of um you know i have a i have a leadership coach that i work with and um, she helped me see and try to find the opportunity the crisis so that was her sort of mantra. She's like, Pooja, there is an opportunity here. Like, I know this is the biggest crisis you're facing as an entrepreneur, but what can you do to turn it around? So I think that shift in the mindset kind of helped me see things through. Right, definitely. And you decided to move into sort of a completely different direction with the website and he's ready to uh, make mixes. Um, how did this decision come about and, and that too, right in the middle of the pandemic, it definitely couldn't have been easier because you had to kind of start from yeah. scratch. So, you know, the thing is that I, I also feel that the pandemic kind of showed us uh, flaws in the business that already existed. It kind of magnified that. But it also kind of, uh, for me, accelerated a lot of things that were on the back burner. So, you know, the packaged goods uh, business is something that we were working on for many years. And for us, that was where we actually saw scale as a business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, but, the, but the thing is that my attention and focus was everywhere. And suddenly there was a pandemic and all I, I knew that I had to do was this. And so uh, it was just me and another food technician. And we just worked day and night till we got our products ready and, uh, you know, tested it, got it out to market. And I mean, we ended this year uh, more profitable than we've been in 11 years. So... Um, you know, to look back at it now, it's kind of, uh, at this time last year, I was just in tears, crying, didn't know what's going to happen to the business. And now I look at it, I'm like, wow, we did this, you know, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. turn around. Yeah. yeah. But do you miss the cafe? I'm sure you Oh, miss. so much every yeah. single day, you know, but I also feel that there's, um, you know, we have the same hot chocolate that we made at the cafe now. And, you know, eventually I feel someday I will open another cafe, but, and with all the lessons that I've learned with everything that went wrong with this one, um, for now it's like a piece of my heart and a lot of people share, you know, the love that poured in, I can't tell you, like I knew that it was special to me, but to see that something that we created was so special to everybody else, yes. it was a, it was a feeling like none other. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Um, and you know, uh, in this process, like you rightly said, um, it was just you and a technician kind of working day and night. And to figure out, you know, you know, the supply chain, packaging, literally everything. How challenging was it for you not only to survive this financially, but also you know, emotionally? Um, I think that a lot of, you know, I think the hardest part was the first three months where I was in a limbo and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I think once I made up my mind that this is the direction that I want to go into and this is what I want to do, a lot of the things kind of fell into place. I also feel that I've always been very honest and very open and vulnerable about how I feel. Um, and I think as a leader, that's really helped me. So that when there were times when I didn't have answers or I was, um, you know, I've gone out on Instagram and asked help for packaging. That's actually how we found out. Mm -hmm supplier you know because yeah. I, I put a you know I call Instagram my genie and I put up a, a post and we found uh, someone who could help us mm -hmm. with packaging mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's just about being as open and honest as possible getting our customers involved in the whole process so um, I kind of try to use these sort of you know the ebbs and flows and kind of try and use them to my advantage right. and you could have kind of given up and you know, shut shop. Man, I was, I was, I was ready. I was ready to do it. Yeah. The conversation that we were having, I've spoken to like you know, CEO of big FMCG companies, asking if they'd like to buy like the small patisserie brand. Mm -hmm. um, I've spoken to you know fellow patisserie brands, but it almost reached a stage where I had my back against the wall and I didn't know what the future would be. So at that point, I was like, what is the best I can do for you know the the people on the team? I wanted them to get paid, all of that. So, um, you know, I look back at the last 12 months and I kind of, I feel like we did something right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and what did you keep telling yourself in those uh, few months that kept you kind of going, uh, when, especially when things got a little too much for you? 
I think uh, there was a song that was playing constantly in my head, strangely enough, because I had this one spot in my room where I would sit with my laptop and my, you know, look at Excel sheets all day and try to make some sense of it. And there was a song which which says it's always darkest before the dawn that would just keep playing in my head. And I just knew that, um, you know, this is not, um, this is temporary. And I think that in life, everything is transient. And I think that's what really pushes me in every moment, whether good or bad, right? Like just keep thinking that this moment will pass. So I think that, that kind of helped me make it through that time. Right. <laughs> um, and I'm glad that it did. Um, and even now, I think there is a lot of cert- uncertainty, you know, I mean, I keep seeing your posts where um, just the other day, the rains were very bad and you had to kind of shop, stop deliveries. And uh, a few months back, we were at the peak of the second wave where, you know, there were lockdowns all over again. So as an entrepreneur, how do you deal with these last minute surprises and shocks that keep coming your way? I think if anything last year has taught all of us is that nothing is certain and you have to take each day at a time. So I think um, for me as well, you know, every day is a new sort of challenge and every day I go with a mindset that I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll take it as it comes. Uh, Some things I can prepare for, some things, you know, I have a great team and we can handle. And the other things that life throws at us, we deal with it as it comes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give us an example of you know, an instance like that where you where you've just had to. I mean, uh, you know, so our kitchen is in a low lying area in Parel, and it happens to us once every year, where there is a crazy monsoon and water will start filling up outside our kitchen, but also start entering our space. And uh, it's a big problem because, you know, obviously there's a team that now stays uh, you know, on site and you have, um, you know, you have electricity that has to be cut off. So all our fridges with everything inside it. So the, it happened this Sunday and we had to call like, you know, all our hundreds of customers and inform them that we couldn't give them their order day. And, you know, it was just like after a point, you're like, these are things that are out of my control completely and I can do the best that I can. So how do we make it up to them in that manner? But at that point, there was literally nothing we could do. And we just said, OK, let's just deal with this moment the way the best way that we can and um, everything else will follow. Definitely. And what do you do to keep calm? It's literally madness um, that you deal with. Uh, I think I'm not sure. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I think for me, um, meditation, I think it's something that uh, you know has really helped over the last year, especially. I've always been really big into yoga and meditation, but especially in the last year, it's just become very important to have that quiet time for yourself, to allocate a certain you know time of day, which is yours. And um, I think a lot of it is also reflection. Uh, so to understand what is it that is triggering me. So for me, I've kind of, you know, I'm like, why is this bothering me so much? And mostly you realize that most flare-ups are at surface level and try to go below that and understand what is triggering you. So, um, yeah, it's been a year of just like a, a long journey of self-discovery. Yeah, definitely. Um, and over the last few years, your journey as an entrepreneur, and I think this is very true for a lot of business owners where, they're so involved with their products and the work that they're doing. How do you kind of, you know, uh, keep Pooja Dinga away from uh, Le 15? Kind of pull yourself out of your baby? Yeah. So, you know, I've never really consciously... Wow. Sorry. Hello? Hi, did I lose you there for a second? Uh, No, I, I... I'm right here. Um, Can you see me? Yes. Uh, So your question of how do you separate the two, I think for me, it's always been very clear. um, You know, I am, I'm so much more than what I do for a living. And that has always been uh, very important to me. So I have a lot of other interests. Uh, I love baking and I love being in the kitchen and building this business. But I also love so many other things like writing books, podcasts, reading, and I just try to live a very a full life that involves all those interests and not only work i think somehow that's helped separate the two definitely and many small business owners you know like you have suffered very badly like i mentioned in the intro as well um some have survived due to whatever pivots that they came up with others unfortunately haven't um what advice or tip would you give them when you know people are just on the verge of kind of giving up 
I mean, honestly, there's no easy way to deal with the things that the last 18 months have thrown at us. Um, I think, you know, when I was really in the darkest frames of frame of mind, I would speak to a lot of my mentors and they would often tell me that you're, you have to understand that a professional failure is not a personal failure. And um, if something is happening to you because of circumstance, then it's really not, you know, in your control and you just accept for it. But learn the lessons, take the lessons from it and, you know, and, and move on to the next thing. So you never know what that's going to be. So it's never wasted time. It's always things that you've learned and use that as a foundation for the next thing that you do. I mean, it's easy to say, but it's, it's really challenging. Yeah. It really is, I'm sure. And <clears throat> there are some new entrepreneurs that have, that, you know, I mean, be homemakers, there are various different people who started their own businesses right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, any tips or any word of advice for these new entrepreneurs? I think a moment of crisis always leads to great opportunities. So if you found something uh, in this time, you know, I know so many businesses that have come up and, and home chefs with WhatsApp businesses and, you know, yeah. it's great. I think uh, try to find your niche, identify what that is, what kind of value you bring to your customer. I think the internet also helps getting to know our customers so much better. Uh, tools like Instagram for marketing, you have Reels now. So use everything that you have to your advantage doesn't really cost much to do it do that and uh, yeah I think identify what is it that is so special to you and why people will keep coming back to you and once you do that then the rest will follow yeah definitely um I think we can um oh, I think there's some network issue Pooja can you hear me Sorry, I think I lost you there for a second. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's the one time the internet decides not to work. I know. I, I never have this issue. <laughs> I, I, I can completely relate. This happens every single time. So, I mean, just have to live with it. Uh, anyway, so I think in terms of questions that I had, I think were good. Uh, we got a bunch of questions for you. And I mean a bunch of questions. So I've picked a few um, of those. Um, the first one being, um, how do you manage to handle so many things um, at the same time? And, and you have a lot of projects going on for you. Uh, quite um, so when I started Love 50, this was very challenging for me. And I would find that I was spread too thin. Uh, but right now, I'm, you know, I'm grateful. I have a great team that I can rely on. So... Um, you know, they're with me in this craziness and I throw things at them all the time. So uh, a lesson that I've learned very late in my life is how to hire correctly. And once you hire correctly, you know, the things that you can do is just incredible. So that would be my advice. Hire correctly and then you can do many things. <laughs> right. Um, and how do you keep your team motivated? Especially, and, and how did you do that? Especially, you know, during the tough times. That's, um, I think uh, I saw my team come together like, you know, never before. I, in fact, tell them, and some of them may be watching this, I tell them that we are a different team than we were pre-pandemic because uh, the crisis suddenly got us into this mode of wanting to build something, wanting to save something and really see it grow. Uh, so I think the my, my, my only agenda was to be as open, transparent and honest with them. And I kept telling them at every point of time, this is the state of the business, this is how we're doing, this is how we're doing. And uh, they are as involved in building it as me. So um, I think that's, that's you know, we've, we've, we've kind of just figured that out over the last year. Definitely. Um, and, and how do you find the right resources when you have to pivot very quickly, which is kind of what you did? Uh, how to find the right resources? Yeah. When you have so to think... pivot. Sorry, just a uh, yeah. I think for me, um, you know, the the pivot came really fast, but it was also something that was already pre-planned. So we just kind of changed direction. Um, I reached out to almost everybody that I knew in the same business to help me with, you know, I was very honest, sir, I need help with this. And a lot of people, whether it was you know, from other FMCG companies, etc., were very willing to just give advice and help. So I think for me, I reached out to a network of people. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just use social media as well, yeah. you know, whatever tools that you have with you. 
yeah yeah definitely um all right pooja i think we're good um in terms of all the questions that we had um and um, thank you so much this was a lovely lovely chat um and and i'm sure that this inspired and helped a lot of small business and business owners in general so thank you so much once again thank you thank you so much for having me thank you bye bye take care